Good evening, church. Came across a, a website that I like a great deal. I'm going to tell you guys about it just a little bit. I want you to turn your Bibles to Exodus chapter 12. We're going to be reading from there in a moment. We're going to try to move through it pretty quickly. Got a lot of reading to do and only about five minutes to do a Devo in. So we're going to try to move quickly. So the website that I came across has a writer by the name of Greg McKay, and the name of his website is The Art of Manliness, and it's for guys that have trouble with manliness, such as myself. So it's all kinds of things on there, like how to shave with a straight razor, how to wrestle a bear, and I even gave you guys some examples of some things to put up there. How to rock a pocket square. All you fellows that like to wear a little hanky in your, uh, uh, in your suit whenever you wear your Sunday best, this will tell you how to fold it in, a, in about a dozen different ways. Um, how to throw a perfect football spiral. For those of you that struggle with your quarterback skills, you too can learn how to throw a football in a perfect spiral. How to escape a sinking car. And this one is very handy because it actually even shows you that you're supposed to make sure that you address other people in the car before you try to break the glass and get yourself out. And uh, so I, I thought that was handy. But my favorite uh, thing that I came across here was how to use your baby as exercise equipment. So there's baby kettlebell, baby medicine ball, dumbbell, baby goblet squat. That one was brand new to me. I was not familiar with that one. Um, but anyway, has some really kind of tongue-in-cheek things and some funny things on there. But once in a while, you find something that's actually pretty useful. And I came across one uh, probably in the last couple of months that dealt with a phrase that I've heard my whole life uh, it, being raised, you know, going to church and with religious education, and it was, girding up your loins. So here we have for you tonight, for those of you that may need just a little bit of extra help, an illustrated guide to girding up your loins. Now you'll be thankful to know that there are no pictures of me up on the screen girding up my loins, but I'm going to just kind of read along with you guys some things here. It says the tunic wouldn't allow to do heavy labor or fight in battle, necessitating the girding of one's loins. As you can see there in that picture, it shows a man that's basically wearing a dress and uh, in certain situations, I'm sure that would be fine, but in other situations, it might make it difficult. So uh, slide two then shows, first hoist the tunic up so that all fabric is above your knees. This will give you mobility, uh, freedom to roam about the cabin, you might say. Number three, gather all the extra material in the front of you so that the back of the tunic is snug against your backside. Number four, once the excess fabric is gathered in front, pull it underneath and between your legs to your rear. This feels much like a diaper. Number five, gather half of the material in each hand, bring it back around to the front. And number six, finally tie two handfuls of material together and you're all set for both battle and some hard labor. So go forth, be ye men, and gird up your loins. So I like that little picture there of the sickle sword. Uh, I've always wanted one of those. This is probably about the closest that I'm gonna get to owning one. But in all seriousness, as this phrase is used in some of our older versions of the Bible, we don't hear it in a, lot, in a lot of the newer versions. I thought maybe it would be a good idea for us to figure out exactly what that would have meant. Now that we've seen some imagery of girding up loins, and I'm a visual person, I had to see this in order for some of these Bible passages to make sense. Let's read from Exodus chapter, chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. It says, the Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the first month, the first month of your year, tell the whole community of Israel that on the 10th day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one for each household. If any household is too small for a whole lamb, they must share one with their nearest neighbor, having taken into account the number of people there are. You are to determine the amount of lamb needed in accordance with what each person will eat. The animals you choose must be year old males without defect, and you may take them, uh, take them from the sheep or the goats. Take care of them until the 14th day of the month when all the people of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. Then they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides of the tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lambs. And that same night, they are to eat the meat roasted over the fire along with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. Do not eat the meat raw or cooked in water, but roasted over the fire, head, legs, and inner parts. Do not leave any of it till morning. If some is left till morning, you must burn it. This is how you are to eat it with your cloak tucked into your belt, the NIV says, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. So verse 11 says in the New American Standard Version, that's a newer translation from the last 30 years or so, and it does use the phrase, gird your loins. The idea here, folks, is that they were to eat in haste because very soon after, the firstborn of every child in the land was going to be 
one to die. They were going to be asked to leave, and they had to go very quickly. So this is an instance where they had to gird their loins in, in an effort to be ready to run. Turn with me, if you will, to Proverbs 31. This is a familiar passage, uh, especially for our ladies. And you're about to see that girding up your loins was something that you were not exempt from either. Proverbs 31, verses 10 to 18, speaking of the, the wife of noble character or the worthy woman, says in verse 10, A wife of noble character who can find she is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life, and she selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships, bringing her food from afar, and she gets up while it is still dark. She provides food for her family and portions for her servant girls. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She sees that her trading, her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. So again here, uh, the NIV uses the phrase, she sets about her work vigorously. She's ready to get busy and get after it uh, with work. But in, in the King James Version, it says she girdeth her loins with strength. Ladies aren't exempt. Certainly, they set example for us men uh, quite regularly. And it's an example of girding up the loins, being ready to work. I'd like for us to turn now over to 1 Peter chapter 1. I'm going to read verse thir verses 13 through 16. says, therefore, prepare your minds for action. Be controlled. Set your hope fully on the grace to be given you when Jesus Christ is revealed. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. And again, slightly different phrasing here. It says to prepare your minds. But the New King James Version says, therefore, gird up the loins of your mind. That's where the real spiritual battle is being fought, isn't it, brethren? When you're girding up the loins of your mind, when you're preparing yourself, folks, that's a fight. That's what girding up your loins was supposed to be meant to do. So we saw some pictures up here of this guy that was uh, demonstrating for us how to gird up your loins. It was to help people get ready to run. It was to help people to get ready to work. It was to help people to get ready to fight. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22 says, Flee also youthful lusts, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. And to me, it might be a stretch, but I see all three of those things in that passage. Uh, the idea of fleeing, there's our running, there's the idea of pursuing righteousness, faith, love, and peace. With, that's the idea of work that's involved. And when it says to call on the Lord out of a pure heart, folks, that takes fight in the dog. We have to be ready to... Uh, always be calling on the Lord and making sure that we have a pure heart. So, folks, be ready to run. Be ready to fight. Be ready to work. That's what this girding up of the loins means for us. If you have a need tonight, we want to encourage you to, uh, to make your need known. Uh, whether that means to gird up your loins and uh, begin that walk as a Christian or whether it means to gird up your loins because you've been slack and concerned in your work for the Lord. We want to be able to help you. If you have a need tonight, why don't you come forward and make it known while we stand and sing.